Welcome to the online training series of 3CX. This module will take you through the configuration of bridges in 3CX. In this module, we will create a bridge between two 3CX PBXs. We will be configuring both the master and slave bridges using the tunnel protocol. We will see how the bridge is used to make calls between extensions. We will see how a mesh setup is configured to connect more than two PBXs together, and we will see how the presence information is shared between the PBXs across the bridge. Bridges traditionally connect two pieces of land together. In 3CX, a bridge will connect two remote PBXs. A traditional bridge will have its two ends defined as geographical points, such as north and south, east and west. A 3CX bridge will have its ends defined as master and slave. A 3CX bridge can also pass traffic between the two PBXs via the tunnel protocol. This is referred to as a tunneled bridge. Connecting two or more 3CX systems together via bridges requires at least a Pro Edition license. The master bridge will control the connection between the two PBXs. It will listen for incoming connections from the slave bridge. If the connection is tunneled, it will listen on the PBX tunnel port, which by default is 5090. Creating a bridge in 3CX is very simple. From the Bridges page in the Advanced menu on the left-hand side, click the Add button and select Add Master from the drop-down box. The configuration page will ask for the bridge name. This will be used to identify the bridge in the outbound rules, as well as show the remote bridge name in the 3CX apps and 3CX web client presence screens to show the presence between the two bridged PBXs. The virtual extension number will be used during the authentication process of the connection when a slave bridge will be connecting to the master bridge. So it is important that the virtual extension number is identical on both PBXs on both ends of the bridge. A common free virtual extension number will need to be assigned to both ends of the bridge. The outbound rule prefix is added to the bridge settings in order to facilitate the placement of calls from one PBX to another. This can be left blank depending on your setup. For example, if you have extension numbers in different ranges on each PBX. This can also be the case when the two PBXs are using a different extension digit length. You can limit the number of calls going through the bridge by defining the maximum number of calls. The number of calls placed through the bridge will count towards the licenses of both PBXs. The authentication of the bridge consists of the password that the slave will use to connect onto the master. The bridge password can be changed, but if you do change it, please keep the password complex. If the 3CX tunnel protocol is going to be used to pass the traffic from one PBX to the other, check the Remote PBX Uses SBC Tunnel Connection option. The Remote PBX IP address and tunnel port will need to be defined in the field below. The Slave Bridge PBX will be the PBX which initiates the registration attempts to the Master Bridge PBX. When the connection is tunneled, it will use the tunnel port to pass this traffic to the master bridge PBX. By default, this port is 5090. Similar to the creation of the master bridge PBX, the creation of a slave bridge PBX is very simple. When you click on add, however, choose add slave. The configuration of the slave bridge parameters will be mainly identical to the master PBX. The bridge name, however, will be slightly different to reflect the name of the PBX which you will be connecting to. The virtual extension number will need to be identical to the master PBX. The outbound rule prefix is optional and can be added depending on the configuration of the extension numbers, just like in the master bridge PBX. This can also be left blank depending on your setup and if you have no overlapping extension ranges or different digit extension lengths. The number of calls allowed to traverse the bridge will also be defined on the slave PBX as well. Please note that if you have different numbers of calls allowed on the two bridges, the lower number will take effect. Calls traversing the bridge will also count towards your license usage on both PBXs. In the authentication section, you will need to copy the password from the master bridge PBX. This password will be used to authenticate the slave to the master. If you are using the tunnel protocol to connect the two PBXs together, enter the IP address of the master PBX and its tunnel port in the remote PBX section. The time between registration attempts shows the time in seconds that the slave bridge PBX will send a new register attempt to the master bridge PBX. You can easily check the connectivity status of the bridge from both the PBXs by going to the bridges page in the advanced menu. 
A green dot next to the name of the remote PBX indicates an established connection. Red means the bridge is disconnected. When the bridge connection has been established, the presence information between the two PBXs can now be exchanged. There is the option to publish or send the presence information from the local PBX. Extension group information will be sent across to the bridged PBX. The option to receive the presence information from the remote bridge PBX is also available and is configurable. Here, you choose which specific extensions will have the right to see the presence information for this connection from the remote PBX, not entire extension groups. The presence information for remote PBXs can only be viewed from 3CX apps as well as the 3CX web client. Call status and presence information is not transmitted through the BLF keys of an IP phone. IP phones can only see the call status of local extensions. The configuration of the presence is performed from the presence tab of the bridge connection. In the publish information section, you will add the extension groups you wish to publish the presence information for. To receive the presence information from the remote PBX, go to the receive information section and define the FQDN and HTTPS port of the remote PBX to receive the presence information. Please have in mind that the presence information will not traverse the bridge connection, but will be flowing through the normal HTTPS route. To receive the presence, you will then add the local individual extensions which you want to receive presence information. You can control the number of extensions which can receive the presence. The viewing of presence information does not count towards the license count of the PBX. Each remote system which is bridged to the local PBX will be shown in the presence screens of the 3CX apps and web client as a different header in the 3CX app or in the people tab in the 3CX web client. And it is possible to see the different presence of multiple bridge PBXs and extension groups. Let's go and see an example of a bridge configuration. Let's assume that prior to the configuration of the bridge, the administrator had in mind that there was a plan to connect two sites together and had a numbering plan put into effect. The master bridge PBX is configured with four digit extensions in the 1000 range. The slave bridge PBX is configured with four digit extensions in the 2000 range. The outbound rule required in the master bridge to connect to the slave bridge would be just a prefix of two, representing the first digit of the 2000 range of extensions. In order to differentiate between the four digit extensions of the bridge and any other external number starting with two, we add the number length of four to the outbound rule. Similarly, in the slave PBX, we would add the prefix of one in the outbound rule with a digit length of four to represent the 1000 range of extensions. With this type of setup, no outbound rule prefix is required in the bridge settings. On the other hand, if both your PBXs have the same extension range, that is in the 1000 range for example, the outbound rules on both PBXs will be similar to this scenario. A prefix would be required in this case, for example 9. This could be any number. The number 9 was just used as an example. A digit length of 5 would be required in this case, as the prefix will be detected as a digit. We will need to strip this prefix, however, as the remote PBX will not be in a position to recognize the prefix as part of a valid extension number. In the outbound rule prefix in the bridge settings, a 9 would be required, assuming you have used 9 as the prefix. This will show the remote PBX extensions with the prefix to differentiate the other extensions from the local PBX extensions. Let's have a look at a configuration of a fully mesh setup with three PBXs. We will need to configure each of the connections between the three PBXs. As we can see in this example, PBX A will be the master bridge in the connection between PBX A and PBX B. PBX A will be the master bridge for the connection to PBX C as well. PBX B will be the master bridge for the connection to PBX C. We can see that PBXB is a master bridge for one connection and a slave bridge in the other connection. This is entirely feasible and will not cause any problems. A PBX does not need to be a master or slave solely, but can be either or. The numbering plans will be as follows. PBXA will have extensions in the 1000 range. PBXB will have extensions in the 2000 range. PBXC will have extensions in the 3000 range. 
Just to note that the PBXs do not need to have the same extension digit length to be bridged together. The calls will be sent from one PBX to the other via the outbound rules. We can configure an outbound rule for each PBX to contact its connected bridge PBX. We will have a total of six outbound rules in this scenario. PBX A will have an outbound rule to connect to PBX B by defining a prefix of two and a length of four digits. No digits will be stripped in this case. PBX A will also have an outbound rule to connect to PBX C by defining a prefix of three and a length of four digits. No digits will be stripped in this case neither. PBX B will have an outbound rule to connect to PBX A by defining a prefix of one and a length of four digits. No digits will be stripped in this case. PBX B will also have an outbound rule to connect to PBX C by defining a prefix of three and a length of four digits. No digits will be stripped in this case neither. PBX C will have an outbound rule to connect to PBX A by defining a prefix of one and a length of four digits. No digits will be stripped in this case. PBX C will also have an outbound rule to connect to PBX B by defining a prefix of two and a length of four digits. No digits will be stripped in this case neither. You can also define a backup route to send the calls to PBX B through PBX A. All you need to do is define PBX A as route number two. With the 3CX web client, you're able to see the presence of remote extensions if you have been given the access to do so. By using the 3CX web client, you will be able to perform a variety of functions to interact with the extension as well. For the demonstration of this module, we will configure two PBXs to connect to each other and place a call between the two PBXs. Okay, so in this demo, we will go and create a bridge between two 3CX systems. In the bridges, menu in the advanced options we will go and see uh, the add bridge i will configure this one as the master first i will call this one bridge to slave pbx virtual extension number i will give it a unique identifier uh, 10 100 is my choice of extension i will put an outbound rule prefix as well. I will keep it to a maximum of 10 simultaneous calls. This is the password that will be used uh, for the slave bridge to go and connect. And I will go and add the IP address of my remote bridge. Going to presence, I will publish the information of the extension groups on this PBX. And to receive the presence, I will go and add the FQDN and the port of the other PBX that I am using. And I will select the users that can see the remote presence. There is only one extension on this PBX, so I will add this one to see the presence. Clicking on OK, this PBX is now ready to receive a connection from the slave PBX. Moving on to the slave bridge PBX now, we will go and repeat the process, but this time we will choose add slave. I will call it bridge to master PBX. The virtual extension number needs to be identical, so 10100. I can add an outbound rule prefix if I want to as well. 10 simultaneous calls through the bridge. And now I go and get the password from the master bridge and copy it into the slave bridge. After I paste it in, I use the tunnel. I enable the tunnel across the bridge and I will put the IP address of the remote PBX now. The time between registration attempts is 60 seconds, so every 60 seconds it will try to refresh the registration. Going to the presence now, I will publish the information of my English extension group. I can select more than one group if I want to. 
and going to receive the information from the remote PBX, I will enter the FQDN of the remote PBX. I will select the users that can see the presence. I will select my operator extension and Mr. Bob Hawk. Clicking on OK, I can see them added into the list. When I click on OK, I will be able to very soon see the bridge coming up as registered. Coming back to our master bridge PBX, we can see that they have uh, been connected and they are ready to communicate with each other. We can see that the bridge to the slave PBX is up and running and on the other side, we can see the same thing. On the master bridge, I will basically go and create my outbound rules now. Clicking on outbound rules, I will click on add. I will call this one called to slave bridge extensions. Since I have added the prefix, I will put it here as well. My extensions on the remote side are three digits. So I will send these to the bridge to slave PBX and I will strip the one digit. So the prefix does not go through to the other side. I will click on OK. And now I will go and repeat the process on the other side. Going to my outbound rules here, I will click on add. Calls to master bridge PBX. Call to number starting with a prefix of nine. with a length of four, because I also have a VoIP provider created on this one. I do need to differentiate between the two. I will send to the bridge to master and strip the one digit. I will click on okay. And in order to not have a clash between the prefix of nine on this rule and the prefix of nine with this rule, I will select and move up. Now, to go and test this, I will use my remotely connected 3CX app and I will place a call to 9100. We should hear the operator extension start to ring. You can hear that the phone has started to ring. We can see that the remote operator is calling across the slave bridge. We can see that in the callee as well. Coming to the local PBX now, we can see that it is now basically at the 10100 coming through the bridge and going now because we haven't answered the call, it's going to the voicemail of the operator extension. So we can see that the call is coming in through the bridge. That's how easy it is to connect two PBXs together and make calls across the extensions. That's all we have for you for this module. Hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you at the next one.